Greetings and welcome back to yet another Lua tutorial and in this one we'll take a deeper look into classes and see how we can actually start using them to store our data in a more connected fashion that is also easier for humans to understand. So let me just give you an example of how a class looks like or a fake class because in actuality the object oriented languages have actual classes implementations but in Lua we use fake classes that are actually just associative arrays. And let me just explain how this works. So the first thing we kind of know and already are familiar with is this syntax. So p1, so this is our name of the variable, is player.new. And you might be wondering, okay, what exactly does this function do? And why is there a dot here? What's going on? I don't, I don't really understand. Well, our, our player class, let us just look at this player class. So what we did is just created a new, so, so to say, variable. In this case, we will just refer to it as class because that's exactly what it's trying to be. And we, we put some attributes in or some variables. So let, let's say our first attribute that we kind of want to track about this player or about this class is called HP. And the second one is called a character name. And after every attribute, you kind of have to put a comma there so that, you, that the, the Lua knows that it's actually a different attribute. And the third attribute, so to say, remember in the previous episode, I mentioned the functions can also be stored as variables. And this is exactly what's going on here. We are storing a function in this variable because this is the only way we can actually access it outside of this class interface. And we're just creating something that's called a, a new. So this is our name of the function essentially. And what we're creating is a new object. And what we're doing is iterating through all the attributes that the player has. So that means that we go up see which attributes we have, so that's HP and character name, and what we do is create a new object that has th these values, so HP is zero and character name is blank. And that's what we return. So in this case, what's stored, if you kind of looked it in, into, in, into detail, is just an array, uh, associative array, that has the values of HP, uh, which are zero, and that has the values of character name, which, are, which in this case is just empty blank and you might be wondering okay so this is like an associative array in a way but why is this useful uh well I'll, I'll show you so one thing one thing we can do with it we don't really have to use the old notation what we can do is start using this different notation to kind of start uh, assigning values to our this particular object so we would create something like this so let's just say that we create a new character that has a name of isaac and it has 100 hp and if we just print this out, of course, what ends up happening is uh, you would see exactly what we entered here. And a, a benefit of this is we just create, we can create a new player. Let's call him P2. And let's just create uh, a character called Maggie, maybe, which has 150 HP. And of course, if we just print this out as well, what ends up happening is we would also get the data that we stored in our p2 variables, of course, just after I change the names, that's exactly what we're going to see. So you can see that the first object that we have, p1, has two attributes, hp and character name, and th the value of those is 100 and Isaac, and the second one is 150 and Maggie. And this was created by actually using this little function. So this might seem a bit daunting, maybe you don't know exactly what's going on with this new one, with this function called new, but maybe for the time being, just imagine that this is something that every class should have. This is in other languages called a constructor. So a function that actually creates our class and then saves it into a variable or returns an object that we save into a variable. Okay, so, so far we saw how we can create classes. Are there any other things we can do with them? Okay, let's just take the same example again. And what we want to do is maybe create a function. Remember, functions are also very useful whenever you want to create a class. And we want this function to be called kill player. So that's a bit rude, but what it does, it just sets our HP to zero. So how could we write that? We can tr just try writing like, like, like this. And maybe if you create a new character, so p1 is player.new, and we will set his HP to 100, and maybe just give him a name, just, just to kind of be complete and we would say p1 kill player what would end up happening exactly well if we run this we would see that nothing exactly happens so we would have to of course print out the hp as well so we see if there's a difference and you can see that even though this function executed nothing really happened and you might be wondering oh that's a bit weird right why didn't anything change 
Well, the problem is that the function, so we are calling the function that exists within this object, so to say. So this is also like an attribute of this object. And we are not changing the actual value of the attribute of the object. What we are doing is kind of changing the whole classes. Uh, attribute. So if you wrote something like player.hp, what would end up happening is we wouldn't change the object's value. What we would do is actually we would end up changing the value of this HP. So uh, of the actual class that we created before. And this is kind of a consequence of just how Lua deals with classes and the fact that they're not actual classes, they're just kind of fake arrays. So how, how can we alleviate that? How can we change our HP or maybe any other attribute and have it be visible? So one one possibility is that we send a parameter true and let's just call it an object, right? And we are not changing the general HP, we're changing that object's HP. So whenever you would call this function, you would also have to write something like this. We are sending the P1 here. So this is our object, the player object. We are sending in this to the kill player function and we are changing that object HP, HP to zero. So this is essentially the same as if we were to write P1 HP zero. The only difference is that we are using this function to do it. And okay, so this is a bit rudimentary in the sense it's not really um, that useful maybe, or maybe it is useful, but you, you know, why would you send this object to? What, there's, what's the point, right? Why can't you just have this function somewhere outside? Well, thankfully, Lua has a way to kind of deal with this just a bit better, so it doesn't really require all of these shenanigans to be done. So what you can do is have a parameter called self, and you can reserve, reserve to it a self. So that means that if this object calls this, it's going to re refer to itself. So you don't have to send the P1 true. You can just send no parameters true. And Lua will know that what you're referring to a self is the actual object that called this function. So if you just call this function like this, what we would expect to happen is that the value of this object's HP would change. But this doesn't really work. So the thing we have to change in order for this to work is very simple. We just have to put the colon there. And this colon actually functions as a secret attribute. And the secret attribute that we're talking about here is exactly P1. So what ends up happening, the self attribute kind of gets replaced by the object that is calling it. So if you have a P1 and we call the function on this object, P1 kill player, the self actually becomes the P1. And of course, if you have the player two, uh, which has, uh, which is a different object entirely, and we use the same, the same function on it, uh, even though, you know, this function, when we look in the class is the same, this object has its own set of properties and functions. And what it ends up happening is the self, whenever this, whenever P2 calls it, self actually becomes P2. And the HP that gets changed is of this player actual, of this actual player of this object and not of any other character. And this is just a way to do it that's maybe a bit simpler uh, to write, but maybe it's a bit harder to understand. So in hopes of you kind of understanding it a bit more, I feel like I should just jump into the examples and just show you a few things you can do with that. Okay, so this is the end of the first video and hopefully I shine some light into how these classes are made and how we can start using them. And the next one, we hope that we'll take a deeper look into how we can actually use classes in a more complicated fashion and how we can actually apply that to when actual modding comes out. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.